the passion for riding full tilt at impossible obstacles is international. Here at the three-day event at Lermühlen in Germany, horsemen and women have galloped from behind a dozen frontiers to try their skill and their horses' patience. That's Mischowiecki of Poland. Now Carstens of West Germany makes good, or tries to. This course is said to be the toughest ever constructed. They know a thing or two about horses in Ireland, but... Still, the Irish team eventually takes fourth place. Carefully watching every step, Kalinin on Arlax from the USSR. Brandt, ridden by Herr Blocker of West Germany. England rides in from the wings in the form of Goodwill and Princess Anne. And they don't do too badly. Princess Anne comes second, and the horse seems to enjoy it all. But you never can tell with horses. The English pair, who deservedly ride off for the first prize, are Lucinda Pryor Palmer and a trusty friend called B. Fair. Not a mistake in sight. Lucinda receives her gold medal. And the silver for Princess Anne. The horses, for them, there'll be more hard riding. Because no matter what station in life a horse is born into, he has to work for his living. If ever a horse can be said to have his day, it's here at the Metropolitan Police Horse Show. He can show off to his heart's content. No sooner have they finished a busy day rounding up criminals than they have to show mum and the kids how wonderful our policemen are. That's clever. And who gets the applause? The horse? Uh-uh. Those wonderful policemen again. Even for a police horse, there's no justice. One little fella often overlooked is the Shetland pony. Less than four foot high, they're amazingly strong, having been used to haul trucks in coal mines and carry peat. Their docile temperament and high intelligence make them ideal companions. The other end of the scale, with huge hay-burning capacity, are the Shire horses. When Richard III offered to swap his kingdom for a horse, this is what he had in mind. Once they used to carry a knight and a ton or so of shining armour into battle. Now their job is more prosaic, but just as important. Life's all go. Either alone or hitched to a smart team with a duke of the reins, there's precious little rest even for equine aristocrats. Driving a heavy coach pulled by four prima donnas isn't easy, but Prince Philip's an expert.
Thirsty work, but what of man's noble companions? They're keeping to the straight and narrow. The very business of life for a horse is hard work on the farm. Plowing championships still show how far this business of teamwork between man and animal works in perfect harmony. Once a local diversion, now it's a keenly contested national contest. The horses themselves are a picture of patient cooperation. They even suffer the ribbons and brasses and all the trimmings, including those humiliating ear hats, with stoic dignity. Plowman plods his weary way. Could the poet Gray have been inspired by today's bustling competition? But the contest is beautifully simple, truly rural indeed. You plough your furrow, nice and tidy, laying it aside just so. Deep but not too deep, and you mix it straight as an arrow. To the plowman and maybe to the horse, that furrow is a job well done. Tough, tireless, keen and courageous, horses have always been man's greatest friend. What would we do without them?